welcome into the Sports Buffoons Podcast. Welcome everybody on back to the Sports Buffoon Podcast, the place where we give our take on different sports such as the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, and the college ball. But hey, you can always follow us also on twitter.com slash sports buffoons or Facebook at sports buffoons as well. So my name's Tanner and we have an exciting show today, guys. We'll be chatting on some NCAA basketball of what's been go or my take of maybe the number one team in the nation, and that will stay that way. And also, who's going to win that title game come Monday? Is it going to be Ohio State or is it going to be the Alabama? We're going to find out here. So uh, stay tuned, guys, as we will get this rolling. So let's talk, uh, before we hop into the national title game, guys, let's let's talk about NCAA basketball, what's been going on. Who's still number one? Who's still number two? So number one, you had Gonzaga, who's been just Absolutely great this season. Uh, and then number two, you got Baylor, who's also been absolutely great. Now, unfortunately, these two teams could not participate against each other because they had to postpone it. And hopefully it's still a postpone it and not a cancellation game like some of these have been. Hopefully later on they, they get a chance to actually play each other because it's going to be one hell of a matchup. So let's... Let me, let me give you my take on this real quick. NCAA basketball, the best team in the NCAA going forward for the rest of the year, including uh, as we get into tournament time, is Gonzaga. Gonzaga will remain number one and will be the overall number one seed come tournament time. And that is not a lie. That is the best take there is right now. Why? Here's, I'm going to explain it why. So Gonzaga has established their dominance at the top of the NCAA consistently already this season, early in the season. Uh, They're the only team, the only, sorry, the only team that has a shot to knock them off is possibly Baylor if they get that actual shot to actually knock them off. That's going to be the most, that's going to be the best test out there for Gonzaga right now. So let's hope that happens because I'd love to watch that game. Uh, But so... Here's also why Gonzaga is going to be number one and will be number one. So if Gonzaga first, their first game of the season was against a good KU team, right? All right, and they, KU's been great this year. I'm a KU fan, as you can see in the back here. I got a hoodie on and everything. KU has actually been really great compared to what I thought they would be. I didn't think we'd be winning these versus ranked teams here, and our two losses would be against top ten teams, right? Gonzaga, Texas at number eight this last weekend. But that doesn't matter. Why? Because it gives Gonzaga such a great seeding, a great outlook of what's to come. Gonzaga beat the first game of the season. Gonzaga beat KU 102 to 90. And it sounds close, but it wasn't close, guys. Gonzaga had this game in the books for 90% of the way. KU made their own little comeback, and it, it wasn't going to happen. Gonzaga is just too much of a great team. But I want you to look like KU boosted these guys' resume. This, I mean, the reason that they stay number one was due to this game that they beat the first game of the season, right? So KU, uh, <laughs> KU actually has beaten multiple ranked teams this year. And again, I didn't think they'd do it. So, KU beat a ranked Kentucky team at the time. And to Kentucky has downfall, and that's such a shame. I mean, it really is such a shame. I really hope Kentucky be a lot better this year. But, hey, time will, ha- time will happen for them. It'll be all right. So, they beat a ranked Kentucky team. KU beat Creighton at number 8. Texas Tech, 14. West Virginia at number 7. Just one step ahead from us right now. And you're telling me their only two losses is against Gonzaga? And Texas, both in the top 10 right now, I'm okay. I'm okay. That's Gonzaga's best win this year so far is against KU. And that is a huge boost to even start the season off. And then to see the resume the Jayhawks have produced, I'd I'd, I'd be pretty happy as Gonzaga right now. 
So, but also think Gonzaga has also beaten number seven, West Virginia, who's having a hell of a season. Didn't even think, like, I didn't think they'd be back in the top ten, and they're back in the top ten. Uh, number three, at the time, at the time they were number three, Iowa. So that's a huge win. Uh, and the top ten team at the time as well was Virginia. And these are all teams ranked in the top 25. Like, Gonzaga put together a solid pre-conference schedule, right? That's the biggest thing. So now the question comes, can they continue to be number one through the rest of the season? And the answer is most definitely. Most definitely they can. They won't face another currently ranked team all season unless they actually get to play Baylor uh, and that game gets rescheduled. But we don't know if it's rescheduled. It's not on the schedule yet. I haven't heard anything about it. And I'm hoping this happens, but we don't know. Now, BYU could potentially be ranked. Uh, they are 9-2 and two currently, and they're having actually a pretty damn good season as well. Uh, but Gonzaga could have a dominating cakewalk schedule as they enter conference play. Guys, Gon- Gonzaga's not going anywhere. Gonzaga's not leaving the top five unless they lose to these no-name teams in their division. Now, again, BYU could be a force to reckon with, which is fine. Or that Baylor game could come to play. Now, what if both of those come into play, right? So BYU, if they win one game, just one game out of their two against Gonzaga, that only puts BYU in the tournament, I think, as long as they continue winning out. Like, I'm assuming they're going to win most of their conference games. Uh, but that could hurt Gonzaga as well. Um, guys, really, right now, the resume in the college basketball world, we haven't seen a dominant number one for a few years. Uh, last year, you could say KU was the number one. I mean, we're... We are national champs, or at least I'm deeming that from last year. Thanks, COVID. Uh, but I think Gonzaga has a chance to not only win this year, but continue to be number one in a number one overall seed all season long. We haven't seen that for quite some time. I'm pretty sure I want to say Duke was the last team to actually have that. And I, I'd have to go back and check here, but I, man, that's just scary. And as a KU fan, Right, I know we're we really aren't we weren't number three in the nation. We got that way because we beat a few ranked teams, but we're not number three, guys. We're gonna be a two seed, a two maybe a three seed. It, it depends how Big Twelve play comes. We still gotta play Texas again. We gotta play Texas Tech again. We gotta play Baylor twice. I don't want to play Baylor twice. Baylor's beast this season. And hey, as a KU fan, you know. I'm, I'm not worried about it because we're going to make the tournament. I'm not worried about it. We're not K-State. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, guys, like, it's crazy. It's, it's just crazy to think about. Like, Gonzaga played such a strong non-conference schedule since the beginning. And guess what? That's something that people call out teams like Gonzaga for. They want, like, since, so Cincinnati, right, this NCAA football season was a great example. They didn't play anybody. Now, they almost beat Georgia. They should have beat Georgia. Let's be real on the bowl. Cincinnati, if they would have just scheduled a few top 25 teams, just a few, I'm talking two or three, and beat them, they didn't have to be in the top 10. Just beat what they had in the top 25, the, maybe, maybe somewhere between 10 and 15, right? Uh, Cincinnati could be looking at the playoff scenario, but they're not. Gonzaga decided to schedule a strong schedule. They started off the bat with the Kansas Jayhawks team. Yes, they were young. Yes, they are young. Correction, they are young. But they're still a Bill Self team. They're still a contender. They're still in the top ten every every time, right? They're not going away. That's a huge first game to start off with, right? And then they went, they got Iowa on the schedule with Garza, right? Gar- Iowa Garza. They had West Virginia. They had Virginia. Uh, I mean, these these aren't cakewalk mm-hmm. teams by any means. These aren't cakewalk teams, guys. So Gonzaga did it right. Gonzaga had preseason schedule because they knew their conference schedule was going to be crappy. And guess what? It is crappy. It's awful. There's no ranked teams right now. Like I said, BYU has a contender. There's no ranked teams. And they were supposed to play a Baylor team that got postponed. That's not their fault. 
That's not their fault at all. It's COVID, whatever. COVID crap. We, 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 it's annoying. I'm tired of it. Let's be done with it. Because I want to see these guys play ball. So, intern, guys. Intern. Gonzaga did it right this year. They're going to be number one throughout the whole season. They'll be number one overall seed. And they're going to be a team to contend for the national title. Uh, that's They are the biggest threat this year for your favorite team. Now, if your favorite team is Gonzaga, guess what, man? You're set. <laughs> You're looking golden. Golden right now. So let's just hope that continues. They stay healthy. But that is my take on who the number one team in the NCAA is at this point as we start entering the conference schedules for conference air for everybody. I Gonzaga is number one, guys. So now, speaking of teams to beat, can the Ohio State Buckeyes really beat Alabama Crimson Tide in the national championship this year? Yes. They can. I'm super excited for these guys. And here is why. The Ohio State Buckeyes started later than everybody else. Right? They had that big debacle. The big, you know, the Big Ten was like, oh, we're not playing this year. Not playing this year. And then they saw other conferences start playing this year. And they're like, maybe we can do this. But, hold on now. You need to play so many games to make the title game. Well... The Ohio State Buckeyes didn't meet that aspect, right? So they had some COVID games happen and they canceled. And the Big Ten wouldn't let them reschedule. The Big Ten wouldn't let Nebraska even reschedule. Like, if your game got canceled, you're pretty much you're pretty much done. That's it. You're not playing any, any other team because of COVID. Whatever. Oh, wait. Ohio State's could potentially make the playoffs this year? Oh, you know what? You don't have to play so many games, right? You don't have to play so many games. We're gonna, we're gonna let you in. Okay, that's fine. Cause guess what? The Ohio State Buckeyes have only played seven games this season. Seven games, and they don't. Have, they barely have any injuries at all, which is solid. They were already a solid team last year, after losing to the playoffs. Actually, I haven't played in the playoffs. They were a solid team last year. And they returned a pretty good vet, uh, you know, veteran team for college ball. Uh, and that has helped them get to the spot this year and continue to be dominant. The Ohio State be- has beaten Northwestern, who's ranked. Michigan State, I'm pretty sure who was ranked at the time. A very, very surprisingly good Indiana team who could be a force to reckon with next year. Uh, don't be shocked on that. And... A Penn State team that decided to come out of nowhere and get ranked at the end of the season, right? So these are top, these are top twenty-five teams, out of the seven games that they played. Great, right? And they they beat them handily. Like Indiana, I think was the toughest bet, but they still beat them. And I don't, if I recall the game right, it was, it wasn't such a cakewalk or anything like that. It was a close game. But Ohio State was losing losing that game. They weren't, and you knew this as well, right? And they got to the spot by handily beating a Clemson team who was supposed to be number who's been number one all season until, you know, our sunshine went out. And who has the number one quarterback for the draft? Yeah. That's yeah. And they handily Beat them down in the college playoffs. Hey Ohio State, how you doing? How you been? So they they have a solid chance against Alabama. Now, again, yes, the Big Ten gave them as the exception, right? But the whole COVID rule, it it just wasn't gonna work out. They knew this. It wasn't gonna work out. You can't you couldn't limit games a season. If your team was in contention, you had to do something, and the Big Ten did it right. Right? They had to, They weren't allowed to reschedule. They they had to cancel games with Illinois and Michigan, which Illinois would have been a better game than Michigan this year. But why should they have been barred for an opportunity from a title shot or even a playoff shot? They shouldn't have. 
and the NCAA and the Big Ten figured it out and they got it right. So again, why is Ohio, the Ohio State going to beat Alabama? One guy, Justin Fields. That guy is a different level. He's not a Dwayne Haskins. Um, he's nothing. I'd say he's almost nothing the type of player that Ohio, the Ohio State has seen a quarterback before. Justin Fields is a subtle leader off and on the field. He's been tremendous the, this year and last year. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was standing out on the sidelines last year as well after they lost to watch it and take it in because he wanted because he wanted it so much. And this is the driving force, right? That's what we call it, the drive. Uh, the guy nearly threw for 2,000 yards in seven games this year. He averaged 9 9.9 yards this season. He had 21 TDs, si- only six interceptions in seven games. That's fair. You know what? Fine with me. You, you get 21 TDs in seven games. All you, man. All you. I, I, I ain't complaining. And then his completed percentage was 73.4. This guy does it. Like, he, he runs the offense, and he does it the right way. He He's at the line. you got to feel comfortable with him playing. And there's also a guy named Ray Sermon at running back. Kind of quiet this year, right? He's only total damn near 900 yards with four TDs. Uh, he's averaging seven and a half yards per game as well. Uh, guys, this this offense just kicked the crap out of Clemson. Clemson. They're the Alabama killer, right? They're the Alabama killer. Well, guess what? There's a new Alabama killer. His name's the Ohio State Buckeyes. Because uh, they just beat the number one overall pick of the NFL draft coming up here, Trevor Lawrence. If if you don't think this team has confidence beyond the atmosphere right now with the way they performed in all their games this season, the fact that they got this opportunity to play the Alabama Crimson Tide, the number one team in the nation, in the national title game, you're in denial. Because that team is so confident right now, it's not going to, nothing will hurt them outside of losing a couple players, possibly to COVID. Justin Fields, maybe the running back, maybe some defensive guys, right? But their talent is ridiculous and it continues to be ridiculous year after year after year. Ever since Urban Meyer left, it still hasn't gone away. Remember, the Buckeyes are fresh because they've only played, played less games in Alabama. They're hungry because of what happened last year. And they're angry because they're always being down looked upon. Which is a perfect team to do battle against this big, bad Alabama Crimson Tide team of the SEC for the national title game this coming Monday. I am looking forward to it. This is going to be the most exciting game. And I can't wait to see this close. I think it'll be a close game. I really, 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 really do. And I wouldn't be surprised, like I said here, I think the Ohio State Buckeyes walk away with it uh, towards the end easily just because they are a better team than the SEC Alabama Christmas Tide. So take my word on it. Do what you will. I want to hear some feedback later on too from you guys. I'm really excited for this game. All right, everyone. So I'm going to wrap up the show here. Thanks for listening and tuning into our podcast. We post every Thursday with the group, with the other buffoons. Uh, and we are live every Wednesday recording that Thursday podcast. We are live on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Uh, Twitch.com slash SportsBuffoons15. YouTube and Twitter.com slash uh, SportsBuffoons. So please give us a follow on YouTube and all your favorite major podcast sites such as Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and so much more out there. We are on iHeartRadio as well. Just a reminder, we have a national title game coming up next Monday, Monday night. I'm super excited to watch that. Hopefully you guys are too. So have a safe week, and we will see you later. Thanks all.